Welcome to the fourth video in the series, Fastest HDRI for VFX Equals Rico Theta Z1. Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightSailVR.com. I make tutorials about virtual production, visual effects, 3D software, and more. Make sure to subscribe so you can get more videos like this. This series covers how to use the Rico Theta Z1 to capture HDRIs and how to add CG objects to live action footage. In the previous videos, I showed you how to set up your Rico Theta Z1 with the new HDRI plugin. We talked about shooting considerations in the second video, and in the third video I showed you how to do camera tracking and synthize, as well as how to export that data for Blender. In this video, I'll show you how to bring it all together in Blender. I'll teach you how to light CG objects with the HDRI, and how to add a shadow catcher. For this video, I shot some new footage in a new HDRI with my Ricoh Theta Z1. I cannot stress how amazing this camera is, that it can shoot, stitch, merge, and process the HDRI all on camera. I've already tracked the footage and exported for Blender, so if you've watched the previous videos in the playlist, we should be on the same page. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, so now we're in Blender. I'm going to assume you know the basics of Blender. I'm going to try not to explain too much because I don't want this video to be an hour long, so let's just jump right in. I'm going to drag up a new window, go down to Shader Editor, jump to World, and we are going to set up our HDRI. You can pull your HDRI in and just drag it into this field, but you cannot drag this directly into color. What you need to do is do Shift A, search environment texture, plug environment texture in, and then you need to select this picture icon and then select the image. Here you can press Control T or manually add a mapping and texture coordinate node and now your HDRI is all set up. I'm going to go ahead and switch to Cycles, GPU, and if I press Z, I'm going to go up to Rendered, and now we can see our HDRI, and that looks correct. To import our Synthize project, we can go up here to the Scripting tab, and then navigate to the .py file that Synthize made. This is a Python file and you can click and drag that into the scripting file here and then press play. And if you read through here you can see what it does. So it, it changes the frame rate of the project to match. It changes the uh, start and end frame. It changes the resolution and it does a bunch of other things as well. If we go back to layout we can see that if I press zero I can get out of the camera view zero on the number pad that is and what's really cool is that it actually projects this image background from the camera view so if I find our camera I can press period on on the number pad and then I can see that from the camera's point of view it's projected onto this view and if I press play if I press spacebar to play or if I come down here to our timeline and press play, play you can see that it moves the, and I'm going to actually switch over to Material Preview. So you can see it actually moves the projection and the camera, and all of the control points stay the same. This is exactly what we want, and this looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the animation here. I'm going to save. We're going to call this Rico 4C. Let's go ahead and add a ground plane. This is going to be our shadow catcher. So I can do Shift A, Mesh, Plane. And now I'll press S to scale up. It looks like our world isn't set to scale, that's okay. If you press R to rotate, you can rotate this plane. And this is going to be our shadow catcher. If you don't know much about shadow catchers, don't worry about it. But just know that we're going to want this to be bigger than we need it to be. We would just want to make sure that whatever we put on here will actually catch a shadow. But for now, I'll just keep it down here just so we can see the plane. I think it's helpful to see if we move through our footage, you can see that that plane looks like it's actually in the 3D space. So it looks like our, our, our camera tracking did okay. Let's go ahead and move this to a new collection. I press M in the 3D viewport. New collection, I'll call this Shadow Catcher. And we'll look at that here in a little bit. So for now, I'll just turn it off. I'm going to press 0 to get out of here. I'm going to select our background. I'm going to press period on the number pad to find this camera screen. I'm also going to move this into its own collection. 
call this camera screen. Press OK. So now I can turn this on and off. Turn the shadow catcher on and off. And they are nice and tidy over here. So now what I want to do is I want to add a vehicle. So I'm going to come back to the beginning of this footage. I have a add-on called transportation. I'll have a link for it in the description. And I'm going to add a sedan. I'll add this Audi. So I'm just going to press add vehicle. So it's added the vehicle here. And now I'm going to press make editable for animation. And this is important because I'm going to want to tweak some of the materials. I need to click that so I can do that. So now let's click on the car rig and we're going to scale the whole car rig up. And right now I'm just trying to rough it into position. In this particular shot, I did not measure, but you can see over here that there's a car right here. The top of the car is a little bit taller than these yellow poles here, so I'm just going to keep scaling until I get a little bit taller than those poles. And then I'm going to move around our scene to see where it's located. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate the car so that it's backed into this parking lot here. And then I can press G and then shift G, or excuse me, G and then shift Z to move it back in a 3D space. Only on the Z axis, or excuse me, on everything except the Z axis. And that looks more or less correct. I might go a little bit further back. And it's a little hard to judge because we have this pole here. Um, you can just rotate this out in your compositing software, so I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. So it looks like it's a still a little small, so now that I've moved it back into position, I can see that it still doesn't look quite as big as this car, so I'm going to just scale up a little more. Shift-Alt-Z to hide the overlays. I can also click the overlays button here, so I can see about where it's at. I want to rotate a little bit more that way. Scale a little bit more up. Maybe a little somewhere in there. G, Shift Z. Just move it over a little bit. And that looks that looks okay to me. So we'll go with that for now. So now we have our car on the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and save. If we add our shadow catcher and we click on the plane, which is this one we can come down here to the object properties tab you can also search up here for shadow catcher and you can see here we have mask shadow catcher and if we click on it it doesn't look like it's doing anything but if we save this and then we go into our rendered view you can see that clicking this actually changes something and right now it doesn't look correct that's because transparent is not turned on so Let's go ahead, I'll show you where to do that. If you come up here to the search bar, and search for transparent. Under the render tab, down towards the bottom under film, we can turn the world transparent and that also gives us what we want for our shadow catcher. So now you can see that the shadow catcher is catching the shadows from the car. And you might already notice this, I noticed it right away, that the light is actually coming from this direction. It looks like the, the sun is back over here, but in our background footage, you can see that actually, if you look at the long shadows of this pole, the sun is actually way over here. So we need to make sure that our HDRI is rotated correctly. So let's go ahead and turn transparent off. And then I'm gonna press zero on the number pad to get out. And I'm gonna look at our HDRI. So this HDRI, is sun is over here it needs to be more towards the left of our car and I think there's some more brightness over here that's maybe affecting some of our shadows but that's okay so there's different ways we can do it I know that the uh, yellow pillar should be on the uh, starboard side of the car on the right side of the car if you're driving so if I just navigate around looking this way I can now go down to our world tab our shader tab and under world and I can move the Z to rotate the world and you can also do this in material preview so if I press Z go down the material preview go up here to options and then turn on the scene world 
Now it should work a lot easier in real time. So I'm just going to rotate around Z until I see these yellow, uh, these yellow uh, cylinders here. And just want to just rough it into position. I'm going to come back to this area. I'm going to save. And now the other thing I want to do is I want to go to where I can see these yellow things should be reflecting onto this car. So let's see, let's just move this around the HDRI until we see the yellow. So there we go. I see, I see, the, see the cone here, uh, the cylinder. So that's what we want to see. So right now, <clears throat> this HDRI is lighting our scene and it's also giving these reflections. Um, but the most important thing I would say is the, the, I don't say the most important thing, but one of the most important things is the reflections. So I think it's the thing that's going to give this away or sell it more is being able to see the reflections. In this particular case, these yellow, yellow cylinders are really the only thing we can, we can see. So I want to just make it work for the yellow cylinders, and that'll be good for me. And then the other thing I, I noticed here, and you get, get, should be aware of, you see this really bright spot right here? That is most likely because we have a default light in our scene. So let's see, yep, we have a light here. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and delete this light. The HDRI is the only light source. So now let's just go through and make our materials a little bit more realistic. So right now, the thing that sticks out the most to me is this front part of the grill. It just looks too fake. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this grill. I'm going to go over to Object, and I'm going to mess with the uh, material here. Um, it's all the way up metallic, and it's all the way down with roughness, so it's going to be very reflective. So I think maybe the problem is just that it's just too bright. Yeah, that, that's already night and day. If I, if I AB this, just bringing it down that little bit makes, at least in my mind, it makes a huge difference. It looks much, much better. Um, all right, and then the tires also look a little gray to me. I'm going to turn off our shadow catcher for now. So these tires, I feel like they should be darker, so I'm going to click on the tire. Make sure I have the tire selected. And then I can, let's see what happens if we just take the base color down. Yeah, that just that little difference makes a huge difference, at least in my mind. And then these rims, I feel like these should be chrome. Um, I'm going to make them chrome. So select this material, make sure it's selected. And then under the material tab, um, metallic is all the way up. And then I can turn roughness all the way down. And now that's nice and reflective. You can also turn up the white a little bit more. Okay, that's going to wrap up this video. In the next video, we're going to finish up the series Fastest HDRI for VFX equals Ricoh Theta Z1. We'll talk about rendering and compositing, and we'll finish our project. We'll continue to use the HDRI we created with the Ricoh Theta Z1 using the new HDRI plugin. I'll give you some tips on improving your materials, and I'll show you how you can composite right in Blender. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video, and also check out the playlist here. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.